Everyone loves a good party. Getting together with friends old and new to celebrate some occasion. Yeah, lots of fun. Hey, we're having a party. And you are invited. Before the party starts, let me welcome you to Mornings with Bishop Robert. Thanks for joining me. You know, there's always a selection of beverages at a party. <laughs> this is the top spot on the internet for beverages with a bishop. You know, my goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and then help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So if our time together today speaks to your heart, let me invite you to like, subscribe, and also share this with a friend. Hey, what's not to like about a great party? Friends gathering together to celebrate some milestone like a birthday or an anniversary, or perhaps an accomplishment like a graduation. Often, there's even a few new people to meet, and of course, that's always good. There's just something about a meal with family and friends that can't be beat in my book. Well, today's verse says, Praise the Lord! Praise God in His sanctuary! Praise Him for His mighty deeds! In other words, celebrate! <laughs> hey, let's get together and, and rejoice in who God is and who we are in Him and all that He's done. The early church often combined a, a communal meal, a time of teaching, and the celebration of the Eucharist, the ultimate party. Friends gathering together to celebrate an anniversary. <laughs> Do this in remembrance of me. Week after week, gathered together to celebrate the great love that Jesus had demonstrated. It was the defining meeting of the people of God. And this morning, I want to fill you in on how the early church worshipped God, because how God is worshipped is important. It's a little different from our regular devotions, but I think it's going to touch your heart. It's really important. The shape of liturgy was really established in the history of Christ's new community. And it's really remained relatively unchanged, except for some recent changes in Protestant churches after the Reformation. Worship as designed by God, is liturgical. That is, it's the work of the people. That's the, the biblical and apostolic standard. It involves the participation of all the people, as opposed to just spectator worship or, or worship as theater. <laughs> the liturgy, always conforming to the apostolic shape, is free and open, participatory, and spirit-filled. It involves the spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, our worship in the CEC is characterized both by liturgy and liberty. So our celebrations can really take multiple expressions, but, but it's always within the shape of the liturgy. Now, I've said that a few times. What does that mean? It simply means that all three streams of the historic church ought to be evident. So they reflect the nature of and the character of the apostolic structure of worship. And please, don't think this is restrictive. I mean, it, it's sort of like telling people, when you drive, you got to stay on your side of the road and pay attention to traffic and don't exceed the speed limit. Now, it doesn't restrict where you travel. It just simply provides a structure that makes every trip as safe and beneficial as possible to the largest group of people. In the Continuing Evangelical Episcopal Communion, <laughs> that's us, CEEC.Church. This means that every worship service begins with a deliberate gathering unto the Lord, a dedication of the worship service unto Him and His glory. And as we do, we're sincerely to consider and publicly repent from our sin. Then having been cleansed by his grace, we enter into a time of worship, giving him glory to his name. We always read from and, and get instructed by his word. 
And at the principal weekly gathering, or, or gatherings, because some churches have to have more than one Sunday service, will always include a celebration of the Eucharist. You know, I find it fascinating that many churches today celebrate the Eucharist so infrequently when compared to the historic church. Some do it once a month, once a quarter, <laughs> even once a year. And frankly, I don't get it. Also, the logic behind the choice is, well, quite comical, at, at least from my perspective. Many churches today place a great deal of emphasis either on the worship or the teaching. And of course, I'm not advocating getting rid of either of these. I'm just observing the foolishness of their reasoning would never be accepted if it were applied to either of those two pillars of worship. I mean, can you imagine a church or a pastor saying, yeah, we, we only teach from the Bible like once a month here. I mean, you know, if, if we were to do it every week, it might become routine and, and not really appreciated. <laughs> I mean, that's absurd. When the church gathers for worship, it's to celebrate the love of Christ and to enjoy the closest possible intimacy with him. It's to be a celebration of his love. And true love is never routine, even if it involves routines. Look, I kiss my wife several times a day. If you're married, I hope you do too. But if that ever becomes routine, the problem's not that you're doing it too regularly. <laughs> the problem's to be found in the root of the relationship. Only when your relationship is suffering does an expression of love lose its importance. Fix the relationship and enjoy the expressions of intimacy. Hey, that applies to our relationship with Christ as well. It applies to the Eucharist, worship, and His Word. So let's party. <laughs> let's celebrate because of His love. His love gift to us was one of total commitment, absolute surrender, and unrestricted love. He likens it to a marriage. We're called the Bride of Christ. So celebrate. The psalmist says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Yeah, we're having a party. <laughs> and we're inviting you to the party too. Hey, that's all the time we've got this morning. Before I go, could I please ask you, help me introduce people to the Jesus they never knew. Help them get to know him and his word personally and better. Please do like this video. It will help more people see it. And then click follow or subscribe so you and I can get together every day. If you click the link in the description, you'll get a free copy of my book, Count to One, God's Plan for Christian Unity. We'll drop it right in your inbox. Hey, one more thing. Share this with a friend, would you? Because as you do, that makes you part of the team, touching hearts all over the world with the love of Jesus. Thanks for helping.